Hello, good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. I hope that uh, it wasn't too terribly cold. I know that the journey was uh, a bit long to be outside. Um, but thank you for being here, regardless. Um, my name is Emily Gilgoff, and I'm the Director of Civil Society Affairs here at the Embassy of Israel. Um, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this ceremony, honoring two American heroes who bravely put themselves in harm's way in order to save another's life. On May 13th, 2017, in the old city of Jerusalem, Israeli National Police Officer Naaman Perez was brutally attacked by a terrorist armed with a knife who stabbed him multiple times. Rushing to his aid and saving his life are today's medal recipients, Mr. Simchat Sin and Mr. Mordechai Likenstetter, who will be, <laughs> who by chance happened to be at the, scene, at the scene and engaged to stop the attacker. We appreciate you all for being here, especially, um, again, for this cold day, but it's a, it's a good day, and uh, for this momentous occasion. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to welcome retired Chief Chaplain, MTA Police and Universal Jewish Police Association Director and Founder, Rabbi Svi Berkowitz. Thank you very much. It's my distinct pleasure to be here, Mr. Ambassador, and all distinguished guests over here, and of course our honorees over here. I, I'll never forget, I had a non-Jewish friend of mine attend a Hasidic wedding. He was invited to attend a Hasidic wedding. But he didn't speak Yiddish, he didn't speak anything the way he goes and says, yes, what should I do, what do I ask? I said, remember two phrases. One of them is, if they ask you a question, how are you? You say, Baruch Hashem. And if you say, how's everything going? You say, Chazdei Hashem. That's it, it's only that. Baruch Hashem, Chazdei Hashem. And it worked. Baruch Hashem, today we can say the same thing. Baruch Hashem, for what we are witnessing, and Chazdei Hashem for what was accomplished by these two individuals coming from the culture. It's ironic enough that today's week's Parsha, we are between two, Parshiot to the Torah Yitro and Mishpatim, where we speak about the most important thing, the respect for human life and respecting the sanctity of life. And thank God, here we have two individuals that remind me to, to come to the aid and that situation. Now, most of you know, when something happens, people run the opposite way. The cops are the ones running to the action. Well, these two individuals, as Yeshua was told by Karash Baruch Hu, Chazak Ve'ematz, be strong but be courageous. It's one thing to be strong, it's another thing to be courageous. And for them to come and save this individual, not only did he save his life, fulfilling the great mitzvah of Lot Amot Adam Recha, do not stand idly by my blood brother, but by the same token, when Kodesh Baruch Hu approached Cain for murdering Hevel, he said, the, breath, the blood of your brother are screaming at me. So the commentaries asked, what do you mean the blood? Well, the blood killed one person. No, 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 no. When he killed Hevel, he killed future generations as well. You, not only did you save this police officer, but you saved your, uh, future generations as well. So in that, I want to give you a bracha. Yevarech Hashem etzion, Urebe Tuvi Yushalayim, Urebani Mubanecha, Shalom Ad Yisrael, Shalom Am Olam, thank you, and amen. Thank you, Rabbi Berkowitz. Um, at this time, I would like to introduce International Association of, of Chiefs of Police, President Chief Paul Self. All right, I'll be honest, it's not easy to follow a rabbi. <laughs> you know, our organization represents law enforcement leadership throughout the United States and in 152 countries. When my brother, Commander Alag, called me and told me of the heroic act of these two men, I was honored to be asked to say a few words here today. And I will tell you, I worked with the creator of Marvel Comics, Stan Lee, for numerous years. And working with him, he had one resounding message, and that is, anyone can be a hero. You don't need a badge, you don't need a cape, all you need is the courage to step up, the courage to do something when others won't. The courage to run in when others are running out. And my friends, I will tell you, I cannot be more proud of both of you, not only representing the United States and what you did saving another police officer's life abroad, but more than that, you exemplify the human spirit, what it's like to truly care about people. And that's what both of you have done. We are forever grateful as police, representing police throughout the world, I cannot thank you enough for being there. I'm honored to be here, and a round of applause for what you did.
Thank you, Chief Sell. Um, now I would like to introduce another special guest, former FBI Assistant Director and current Homeland Security Director at GINSA, Mr. Steve Pomerantz. You know, uh, I'm going to follow along with our last speaker to say that I think that uh, in, in today's society, in American society, one of the most overworked he words we hear is hero. Everybody who shows up and does their job or puts on the uniform does the right thing, but they're not necessarily a hero. And, and I certainly know that I'm not a hero, but in the law enforcement profession that I served in for 30 years, I was privileged to walk among heroes and to know heroes. And I think I know one when I see one, or in this case, two. These men are truly heroes in what they did. And I think that heroism should never be taken lightly. When we cheapen the word, we, we, we cheapen the meaning of the word as well. Heroes often change the course of history. And even when they don't change the course of history, they bring out the best in us. They exemplify by their actions the, the best of humanity, the best that we can be, and the best that we are. And that's what you did for us as Americans and as Jews in what you did in, in, in Israel on that day. We're proud of you. We're proud to be part of you. And, and you know, in the U.S., we, we like to say, uh, see something, uh, say something. In Israel, I think it's see something, do something. And that's, again, combining it all, what you did. And, and it's a privilege to be in your company. And, and I hope especially your families, I know, are here. Take this meeting of this ceremony, this well-deserved ceremony today. Thank you for what you did. Thank you, Mr. Pomerantz. Um, now, I'm glad to welcome um, Israeli Police and Public Security Ministry Attaché to North America, Commander Itzek Amo. Well, it's not so easy to talk after three Americans. I'm Israeli. So, <laughs> Ambassador of, uh, of Israel to the United States, His Excellency Juan Dama. International Association of Chiefs of Police, Chief Paul Sell, Wabais, distinguished guests and colleagues. We are gathered here today to award a medal for a civilian exemplary conduct to two U.S. citizens who performed a white act while on Israeli soil. They put themselves in harm's way to save the life of an Israeli police officer. Unfortunately, Master Sergeant Naaman Fares couldn't be here today in person, but actually, I think he would like to say a few words. So, Naaman Fares, please. Good evening, in fact. First of all, I would like to to the two angels, Mr. Mordechai and Mr. Simcha, who, who were sent my God to save my life. From me, my family, and the true people of Israel, thank you from the bottom in my heart for your care. With your, with your very hand, you put, you put your life in danger to save mine. You forgot to trust it, to stab it me many times, more than anything you drive, you drive the model of your baby. I hope you to see you soon again. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Master Sergeant Aman Fawes, and uh, we wish all of you full recovery to you. Unfortunately, we have become accustomed to terror attacks in our daily lives. Intervention by the public in real time should never be taken for granted, as it often involves immediate personal risk. Deeply impressed with their determination and bravery, the Israel National Police the Croatian Committee has decided to grant Mr. Richtenstetter and Mr. Tsin the Medal for Civilian Exemplary Conduct. 
proactive engagement in such an event is the duty of every police officer in the Israeli National Police. However, it is far and above the duty of civilian. Both of you, both of you, reacted to the situation and helped the police officer disable his attacker. On behalf, on behalf of the Israel National Police, it is my honor to award you the medal for civilian exemplary conduct. As written in our Jewish sources in the book of the prophet Isaiah, Ish et re'eu ya'zoru ulachiv yomar chazak. Everyone help his neighbor and say to his brother, be of a good carriage. God bless the state of Israel. God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much. Now I'm honored to invite the ambassador of Israel to the United States, His Excellency Ron Dama, to the stage thing. Thank you. Thank you, Itzhak. Uh, also for being the driving force behind this event and giving us the honor of hosting this reception here. Uh, and thank you for all you do to strengthen law enforcement ties between our two countries. You know, before I became ambassador here, my predecessor, Michael Oren, who is a historian of the U.S.'s relationship. I'm not a historian, I just play one on TV. But he's an actual historian of the U.S.'s relationship. He said, you know, you never understand the depths of the ties between our two countries until you sit in this chair. It's hard for people to understand it, how complex it is, how deep it is. We have our military attache here, Mickey Edelstein. You understand, probably before Mickey came, did not understand the depth of the ties that you have here and how broad and deep it is. But it's not just in military, it's not just in security or in diplomacy or technology or trade. It's about the ties here that you have together and the police agencies working together to fight crimes, most of whom people never find out about. The work that we do together in order to protect lives. So we are uh, extremely grateful for the ties that we have. And um, uh, a chief cell, I gotta tell you, as a name, as a police officer, to have that last name, that's about as strong as you could possibly get. That's chief cell, I mean, that's strong. That sort of deters people. Um, and I just wanna thank you for the partnership, Rabbi Berkowitz, thank you for those uh, moving words. And above all, Simcha uh, and Mordechai. Um, when I heard about what you did, the first thing that came to my mind was what the rabbi said, al tamod al It's a biblical commandment from the book of uh, Vaikra, Leviticus, to not stand by idly uh, when the blood of your neighbor is being spilled. And this literally is what happened. And we all would like to believe that if we were tested in that way, we would pass that test. I mean, you don't know unless you're tested. And you see examples of this heroism that people, as people are discussing. You see it uh, all the world, but there, it's unforgettable. You saw it. Um, I saw it at least in that Oklahoma City restaurant. You saw it on the train to Paris. You saw it in Hurricane Harvey with this remarkable story of a 13 year old who saves more than a dozen people with an air mattress. I mean, remarkable things what people will do in moments of crisis and they will rise uh, to the equation. And we saw it in the actions that you took. But beyond your personal heroism, and I actually saw the video on how you actually ran to the scene of the crime. It wasn't that you were there, which would have been heroic enough. It's that you ran to the place where the crime was happening. Um, but it's beyond that, I think it, it, it symbolizes two things. You are Americans and you are Jews. And I think it speaks in both parts of your identity. Um, as Americans, your actions symbolize, I think, the great solidarity between our two countries. We have no greater friend than the United States of America. It's fitting that the first non-Israeli to ever receive this citation would go uh, to Americans, to two Americans. Uh, we have a relationship and alliance that is based on values, it's based on interests, it's based on a shared sense of destiny, and things that I get to speak about all the time as Israel's ambassador, but ultimately it relies on people. It relies on people understanding the bonds uh, between our two countries that, that we both share these challenges. And Israel has been blessed to have the support of the American people, support now that is as strong as it's ever been. We have been deeply best blessed to have the support of the American people uh, and the world, frankly, 
I don't think Americans hear this enough, and it's important for me to say it to you, it's important for me to say it to the congressman, how blessed the Jewish people have been and the state of Israel have been to have the support of the American people. We haven't, you know, and from the Holy Land came the Good Samaritan. People know the story of the Good Samaritan, and most people know the story of the Good Samaritan. But America has been the Good Samaritan among nations. There's no nation. There's no nation that has been a greater force for good in the world than the United States of America. And the Jewish people have been blessed that this great and powerful and just country has been by our side. We saw what the world was like when America was not the preeminent power in the world. The Jewish people saw what that world was like. And now we see in the last 70 years of our existence, 75 years since World War II, what the world is like. America being the preeminent power of the world. And may God bless America for centuries and centuries and centuries to come that they will remain that. But you also, you're Jews. And the first thing that I thought of when I heard and saw that action is Kol Yisrael Arabim Zelazeh that we have a bond and responsibility. We just had a Druze police officer, and they are part of our nation. They are part of the nation of Israel. We refer to it as uh, a covenant of blood with our Druze brothers. And the fact that you did this, I think, encapsulates some of the great moments that we've had in our history of people rallying to help their fellow Jews, their fellow Israelis. You saw that in history with Mickey Marcus, the great general, who, after, who became Israel's first general, I should say, Colonel Mickey Marcus in the American army after fighting in Europe, came over to help Israel fight in its war of independence, along with many American Jewish soldiers who had just battled the Nazis in Europe and decided actually to come to Israel, help us establish our air force, um, and, and to fight. We saw it in Entebbe, one of the most remarkable moments in the history of the state of Israel, where we swooped in to that airfield to save um, Jews, both uh, Israelis and non-Israelis, who had been kidnapped, um, and to bring them to freedom. We saw it when we airlifted Ethiopian Jews to freedom. Um, we see it when American Jews rally to Israel's side during times of war, and all this debate about the difficulties and the tension. When there's war, you can see how everybody rallies together in the tremendous unity. And we saw it in the actions that you took you both put your lives in danger to go help save that Israeli police officer. You ran to the danger. And so I want to say to you, thank you for being ambassadors. Thank you for being wonderful ambassadors as Americans for America. And thank you for being wonderful ambassadors for the Jewish people and for everything that you did um, we are deeply appreciative and honored, and now I think we're going to come up and give you this award, the first time that this has ever been done outside of, uh, of Israel, and I want to call up again Commander Almo. And now our capeless heroes, uh, if you could both come up to receive your award as well, Simcha and Mordecai. Thank you, Ambassador Dermer. Um, at this time, can everyone please stand for the anthems?
time, can everyone please be seated while the ambassador exits the ceremony? Thank you.